going on guys it's Greg here and uh, today I want to talk to you guys about 10 uh, overlooked items for your bug out bag your get home bag or your survival bag uh, you know these are basically uh, small items that a lot of people don't think about uh, that you should have in your survival bag your get home bag um, you know your bug out bag um, so I'm not going to really waste much time. I'm just going to get right into it. I'm going to basically uh, list the 10 items that I think people overlook. And I'm going to give you my reasons why they're important. Um, so this is in no particular order. Um, th this isn't really like ranked like what's most overlooked or what's most important. Uh, this is just a list of 10 things that I was thinking that a lot of people uh, don't include in their in their survival kits um you know and and i think it's uh something that's very important so the first thing is uh earplugs and ear uh ear protection hearing protection um you know i got this box i don't know if you guys could see it's a it's a box of earplugs i got this at uh cvs for like five bucks uh it comes with 10 10 pairs of uh orange orange earplugs um, you know, just like this, you know, for five bucks, you can protect your ears. Um, and, uh, the reason why hearing protection is important, um, especially in an SHTF situation or survival situation, um, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, first of all, you know, you may be around an area where there's a lot of loud noise. It could be from, you know, explosions, gunfire, uh, you know, whatever, uh, machinery, you know, there could be uh, different reasons why you want to protect your hearing. Um, and, and then obviously, you know, if you have a concealed carry permit, um, or if it's legal in your area to carry a firearm with you, um, when you're bugging out or when you're trying to survive or get home, uh, then, you know, you're going to want to protect your hearing. Uh, that's not something that a lot of people think about when they, uh, when they get their concealed carry licenses or when they're, you know, getting into shooting for the first time, you know, people automatically start focusing on, you know, the gun and what type of firearm and, you know, you know, taking tactical training classes and they overlook something very basic, which is protecting your hearing, you know, uh, if you get into a shootout with somebody, you know, after the first two or three shots, you, you know, you're basically, you're going to blow out your ears. You're not going to really be able to hear very well for a long time, you know, depending on the caliber that you're shooting, depending on the, you know, location where you're shooting. If you're shooting indoors, it's going to be even worse. Um, so you want to protect your, your, your ears, you know, obviously, uh, you know, in, in a self-defense scenario, it's not realistic to, you know, pop in your earplugs and then, you know, tell the bad guy to hold on so you could pop your earplugs in. But, um, you know, if you can get, for example, electronic hearing protection, you know, nowadays they have these uh, very high tech, um, you know, electronic hearing protection where it's basically the size of an earplug and you just put it in your ear and uh, it, it amplifies sounds. And uh, what it has is it has a, a special circuit when the, the noise gets above a certain level, it cuts off the amplification and it basically turns it into an, ear, into an earplug, you know, so basically you could walk around with your electronic earplugs in your ears and you can hear everything going on around you. But then if you have to use your firearm uh, to protect yourself, uh, it's going to basically function like an earplug. So I would definitely recommend carrying some, some basic, you know, foam earplugs. Like I said, I, you can go to your local pharmacy and get a box of these for like five bucks and just throw that in your survival bag. You know, this could also be useful for, you know, if you have to do target shooting, if you have to do some hunting, um, you know, while you're in, in your, in your uh, SHTF scenario. Um, so definitely want to have some uh, hearing protection. Um, the second thing that a lot of people don't think about is getting a radiation dosimeter. 
and uh, or radiation detection. You know, you want to be able to detect radiation somehow. And here I just have a uh, Terra P. This is a uh, Ukrainian manufactured uh, Geiger counter and radiation dosimeter and uh, comes in a carry case. I did a review on this, but I can wear this on my waist belt. Uh, I can I can clip this onto my backpack and I'm going to be able to hear the audible clicks uh, when there's radiation detected you know uh, the more clicks that there are the more frequently that you hear clicks is that that means that the radiation source is stronger and there's more radiation being emitted uh, this particular one uh, measures gamma uh, and beta ra uh, radiation uh, you, you really don't need to worry too much about alpha and beta you know, the most important is gamma, you know, uh, and I have this in an in a EMP bag so I can protect it. If there's an EMP or whatever uh, solar flare, it's going to protect this critical electronics here. Um, and uh, so you want to have some way of, of detecting radiation. You know, you don't have to have an, a, a dosimeter like this one, um, but you want to, you, you can get the, uh, they have those uh, radiation stickers that you could put on your, uh, shirt and it'll tell you, you know, radiation levels ba uh, based on it's a color coded. So the more radiation there is, the higher the levels are. You know, your uh, the sticker is going to change to a different color. Uh, those are really cheap. You can get them for a few bucks. Uh, and I highly, you know, if you can't afford a dosimeter like this, is going to cost you. This one was about 160. Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of money, but it's worth the investment because once you buy it, you, you don't ever have to buy another one and you have it for life. And, uh, it's definitely good to have if you live close to a nuclear power plant, like, like me, I live, you know, within probably 20 to 30 miles of a, a major nuclear power plant. Uh, so it's good to have, you know, if, if there's some type of, uh, you know, radiation leakage, I, I can detect it and I don't have to rely on the authorities to tell me what's going on I can detect the levels myself so you want to have a way of measuring radiation especially in today's society where you you know there could be some type of uh, you know terrorist attack or there could be a, a nuclear uh, exchange with a foreign country which is probably less likely you know but it's always good to have a radiation detection of some sort and then the third thing is a nail clipper you know, it's something that a lot of people don't really think about, but a nail clipper is, is a basic uh, item that has multifunctional uses. Uh, obviously, a nail clipper is important because you're going to be on your feet a lot, you know, when you're in a survival situation or SHTF. And, uh, you know, you may have, let's say, an ingrown toenail. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have to maintain your feet and, and, and maintain your hygiene. And, uh, you know, if for example, if, you know, if you have an ingrown toenail and you're hiking, you know, that's going to be very painful, especially if you have uh, equipment on, you're carrying, let's say, a 20-pound uh, pack, uh, you know, you're going to have to maintain your, your hygiene and your health. So a nail clipper is very important. Uh, number four is going to be dental hygiene. And, uh, you know, for me, I just carry a very small travel toothbrush some travel toothpaste and uh, and some travel uh, dental floss. Uh, let's see if I could pull it out and show you guys. You know, it really doesn't weigh much. You know, you're talking about you know, weighs almost nothing, and uh, you know, it protects your your uh, your mouth. You know, because uh, it doesn't sound like it's important at first, but you know, if you don't brush your teeth for a long period of time, uh, it's just my small travel tooth toothbrush right here it's, as you see it's it's you know maybe six inches long got a little thing of uh, some oral B floss and then a small pressed toothpaste you know and this little tube of toothpaste is I don't know what is it two ounces maybe you know it's it's very small you don't really need that much toothpaste you know you're it, it, we're not talking about rule of law here so you just put a little drop on your toothpaste, on your toothbrush, and, and you could use that once a day or once every other day, you know, and you can you can make a little tube like this last for, you know, I've made this tube last, you know, brushing twice a day, I can make this last two weeks, you know, so, uh, and, and all three things together, that this weighs nothing, you know, it, it doesn't take up much room, and it's going to prevent you from getting, uh, you know, different types of nasty 
uh, dental problems, mouth problems, you know, um, you know, if you don't go, if you go for long periods of time without maintaining your dental hygiene, you're going to run into problems with, you know, plaque buildup, you're going to have, you could have gingivitis, infections, cavities, and in SHTF, you can't really afford to, you know, stop what you're doing and make a dental appointment. It's, it, it's not going to be that way. You're not going to be able to just say, all right, hold on, you know, I got to get this cavity filled or I have to take care of this infection. So it's better to just maintain your dental uh, hygiene so you don't have to worry about things like that, any type of complications in your mouth. You know, it's very easy. It takes five minutes, five, ten minutes a day, and, and you don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, and then another thing that's overlooked is morale. You know, a lot of guys, they focus on the technical gear, you know, bullets, am, you know, bullets, ammunition, weapons, you know, the, the sexy stuff with uh, prepping and survival, you know, knives, paracord, you know, backpacks, you know, clothing, boots. These are like the sexy parts of prepping, you know, but really, you know, something like morale is very important to me because, you know, you want to have a motivating factor for you to survive and for you to get home or bug out or whatever the situation is. You need something to motivate you. You know, you may need something to boost your spirits. You know, so for me, I keep pictures of loved ones. Um, you know, for everybody that's different, you know, it could be your parents, your wife, your kids, your girlfriend, um, your pets. You know, keep a few pictures because uh, if you're away from them for a period of time, you're going to want to have something that's going to give you some motivation to uh, get out of the situation you're in and survive. Uh, and, you know, you're going to want something to boost your spirits, you know, and just having a picture of, let's say, your girlfriend or a picture of your wife uh, or your kids, you know, that that could be enough to, uh, you know, boost your spirits up and, uh, you know, make you forget about what kind of a crappy situation you're in. Um, a number six is a uh, laser bore cider. And uh, I just have this little bore cider from uh, Sightmark. And they basically sight mark, they make uh, bore ciders uh, for every caliber, for most of the common calibers, you know, like, you know, your common 9mm, 45, 44 Magnum, 306, 308, etc. Uh, this is just a little laser, basically, it's shaped like your cartridge of your, of your weapon. And uh, you just put it in and... Uh, you put it into the chamber, and when you put it into the chamber, it activates a laser on the back. And, you know, you could basically use the, uh, you could use the laser to zero your sights, you know. So why is this important in uh, SHTF or survival? Uh, well, there may be a situation where, let's say, your, your sights on your pistol, you know, for me, this is a 44 Magnum. So this is what I would carry in a, in a survival situation or SHTF. Um, but you know, let's say if you have a nine millimeter Glock, you can buy one of these in a nine millimeter and you could tuck it away in your survival bag and it'll give you the ability to zero or double check your zero, um, on your weapon, you know, without having to use ammunition and make noise, you know, because in a, in a SHTF situation, you, you you're not going to really have time and, and, you know, uh, you're not going to want to give your position away by zeroing your sights with ammunition, you know, traditional zeroing where you got to fire uh, uh, some shots and then, you know, adjust the point of uh, imp point of uh, aim to the point of impact. Um, so having one of these little bore sighters, you know, it doesn't really weigh much. And basically, you know, it gives you the ability to double check your zero on your weapon. You know, uh, you could, for example, bump your weapon. You know, if you're walking around, you could drop your pistol, you know, you could bump it and the sights could get misaligned. You know, whatever the situation is, if you have a scope or a dot sight, it could get, you know, the adjustment could get thrown off if you drop it or if it takes a hard hit. So it's good to have a laser bore sighter. It doesn't cost much. And uh, it's a basically, you know, it'll save you... Uh, it could, it could save you in a, a serious problem, you know, because if your sights are not aligned properly, you're obviously not going to be hitting what you're uh, aiming at, you know. So a laser bore sighter, 
Uh, number seven is uh, spare boot laces. You know, that's not something that people really think about. They think about getting boots and stuff like that. But, you know, having spare boot laces is important. I mean, obviously, if you have paracord, you could use paracord as for boot lace if you have to. But, you know, you're better off just getting a small roll of boot laces. I, I personally carry two pairs of, uh, uh, I carry one pair of Kevlar, Kevlar boot laces. Um, you know, you want to have Kevlar boot laces because they're more uh, rigid, more rugged. You know, especially if you're going to be going through rough terrain with them. And they're going to be more resistant to, you know, uh, abrasion, thorns, things like that. But, uh, you know, spare boot laces are important because you may, you know, they may wear out if you're, let's say, going through very heavy brush or you're going through some rough terrain or, you know, you're in an urban area, you know, you may, you may beat up those boot laces after a while and you may need to replace them. So spare boot laces is important. Another thing is, uh, number eight is activated charcoal. Uh, activated charcoal, if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just, uh, it's just carbon. Uh, it's made in ovens and it's usually used in, for fish tanks. Um, if any of you guys had fish tanks when you were a kid, you'll know what it's for. You know, basically you use these, activated charcoal is used, uh, by, in fish tanks to filter the water. And basically like when you look at a fish tank, there's those water filters and the water's constantly circulating through it. Uh, basically there, there's a little activated charcoal in there and I'll see if I can show you guys, you know, what it looks like here. Um. You guys can see, you know, it's just little black, you know, black, uh, like pebbles kind of, you know, they kind of look like, uh, that cereal cocoa pebbles. Um, and I just have some in this little, uh, capsule here, waterproof capsule. Um, it's all you really need, you know, but in, they use these in fish tanks. Um, and the reason why they use them in fish tanks is that it filters the water, uh, you know, basically it circulates, the water circulates over these little pebbles, the, the activated carbon. It circulates over the carbon and, and the, the carbon is very porous on the outside. So what it does is it, uh, it captures any type of microscopic uh, contaminants, bacteria that, that come from the fish feces. You know, so the water's circulating through it. And any type of, you know, bacteria and, and harmful, uh, you know, contaminants from the fish feces in the water is captured uh, on, the, on the porous surface of the carbon. And uh, it basically acts as like a filter, you know. So, you know, also hospitals use activated charcoal for uh, decontaminating people um, if they've ingested some type of poison. Um, Usually, let's say you ingest some type of a poison uh, and you know that you ingested it or it somehow got inside you. Let's say you, wh whatever type of poison it is, it could be bleach, it could be some type of chemical. Um, what they usually do at hospitals is they have you take this uh, and they have you, you know, eat it basically. And what it does is it, it uh, the, the, the poison in your body will get all the, the chemicals will get trapped on the surface of the of the carbon and you'll just poop it out um, and it'll reduce the amount of poison that's in, uh, absorbed by your body basically um, so this has two the, the, the way that I would use this in a survival situation is for water filtration especially in an urban area if you have to get water from an urban urban water source you're gonna have to think about you know, chemical contamination, you know, various types of man, you know, artificial contamination in the water, especially like, you know, uh, heavy metals, you know, uh, petroleum based products, you know, oil and gas, you know, things like that, that, that run off into the water. Um, you know, you're going to have to worry about that. So even if you boil the water and you get rid of the, uh, pathogens, you're going to have to worry about chemicals, radiation in the water, you know, depending on what we're, you know, it, you know, where it's located and so on. But, you know, definitely some type of chemical contamination. A lot of urban water sources are contaminated. Even if the water looks clean and it's flowing, there could be runoff 
And with the activated carbon, what I would do is basically take this, put it in my bandana, you know, drape it over my canteen or my canteen cup, and then I can pour the water, you know, through it and, and do that multiple times. And what that'll do is that'll, you know, remove some of the contamination. Now, obviously, you know, we're talking about life or death situation. Uh, you know, am I saying that this is going to remove, you know, 100% of the contaminants? No, it's not. You know, but it's better than nothing, uh, and, and it gives you a little extra chance of, of better fil filtering your water to remove the chemicals in the water. So, and then obviously you can use this for, uh, you know, removing any type of poison from your body, you know. So that that's activated charcoal. And we're almost done here. Number nine is chalk. This is just regular uh, gym chalk for, for working out. And I just put the chalk in this little uh, vitamin C bottle that I used up already. And what I did was I just took the chalk and I broke it into pieces and I put it in here. And why I would use chalk in a survival situation or SHTF is, uh, see, I, I'm, a, I'm a weightlifter. I used to powerlift. Uh, I broke uh, numerous records in powerlifting. Um, and I, and chalk is critical if any of you guys are, you know, into powerlifting or weightlifting, or you're, you're just, you know, into going to the gym, uh, and you like lifting weights, you know, you, you'll know that lift using chalk gives you a really good grip on the bar. Um, and so basically in a survival situation or SHTF, especially in an urban area, uh, there may be times where you have to climb something, for example, let's say you have to climb over a fence or let's say you have to climb a wall or you have to climb up a fire escape or some other type of you know uh some other type of uh object where you need a good grip on your hands and if if your hands are sweaty or they're greasy um or if it's wet outside you know you're going to want to have a way of increasing your grip on your hands you know obviously you have your your gloves on too your tactical gloves you know, but chalk will, will tremendously increase your, your grip, you know, it'll give you a positive grip. So, you know, something like chalk, it doesn't really weigh much and it, it's going to increase your grip tremendously. Even if you have tactical gloves, you can take the chalk, you know, rub the chalk on your tactical gloves and it's going to increase your gripping, you know, your ability, it, it'll reduce the slippage on your hands by like, you know, 75%. So, you know, a little bit of chalk. And then finally is uh, bolt cutters and entry tools. Now with this one, you got to check the legality in your area. A lot of places carrying, if you get caught by the police carrying bolt cutters or, you know, various types of uh, entry tools, you know, you could potentially get arrested for, you know, possession of burglary tools, you know, so, you know, it, it really depends on the police officer and, you know, what type of mood they're in and, and uh, you know, it depends on who you encounter, but, you know, you could get charged with possession of burglary tools. So you got to keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, I carry, uh, I have this, this is like a mini, mini bolt cutters made by a company called Nipex. It's a German company. And these bolt cutters are, are very small, but uh, it, this will allow me to cut through fencing very easily. So if, if there's a, if I'm in an SHTF situation and there's some type of offense in my way, uh, you know, and I have to get through it, you know, this will let me cut through fencing very easily, um, rather than having to climb over the fence and risk injury. Um, you know, and then obviously you can use this for multiple things. If I have to cut sheet metal, if I have to cut bolts, you know, whatever, if I have to gain, uh, entry to something, you know, if I have to cut a lock or whatever, you know, an SHTF situation, this could be very useful. And then I have a miniature pry bar. You know, I just picked this up at a Home Depot. Uh, this is a Stanley Fat Max. It's just a little pry bar. You know, this has multiple uses. You know, obviously I can, uh, you know, I can use this to, uh, you know, enter into, you know, different buildings if I have to you know, I can also use it for escape. I can use this to break glass. You know, if I'm trapped in, in a in a building or in a vehicle, this can be used to, to break glass safely. Um, I can use this as a self-defense weapon. You know, I can strike with it. 
Um, this could also be used as an improvised grappling hook. You can tie some cordage to it. And if you, you know, you can throw this up into an area and, and if you get it lodged properly, you can use this as a grappling hook. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, you know, a small pry bar is, is just, it has so many uses to it in a survival situation, SHTF, you know, from, from self-defense to, you know, improvised grappling hook. You can, like I said, you can obviously use this to, you know, pry different, you know, pry different things open or getting, gain entry to something. So, so that's basically the uh, 10 most overlooked bug out bag items, according to me. And uh, I'll go over that list one more time. That's uh, hearing protection, radiation detection, nail clipper, dental hygiene, uh, morale or pictures of loved ones, a laser bore cider for your weapon, spare boot laces, activated charcoal chalk, uh, and entry tools and so that's basically the 10 most overlooked items so uh, I hope you guys found this video uh, entertaining and educational and um, I look forward to hearing what you guys think are overlooked items and uh, I welcome I welcome your opinions thoughts and comments so uh, thanks for watching take care God bless and I'll see you guys on the next one Thank you.